It's really great to be here with uh, my dear friend Richard Vobes. And I came across you, Richard, when you were talking about your daughter. Ah, shot. yes, in New Zealand. Yeah, and uh, that's what made me aware of it. Richard, what I'd really like to know from you is, yes. why are you doing this? Why? Yeah. Um, that is a good question. I don't know. Now I suppose it's my calling. But when I first started, I didn't think of it as my calling. I was just questioning what was going on. I had my YouTube channel. I was looking at England. I was promoting England, landscape, nature. And then I was, I suppose, on the channel side of things, I was aware that everything wasn't quite as it should be in my way of doing things. The people had a government that seemed to be not listening to them and pushing things to them that they didn't want. Yeah. And I thought, well, this is a bit odd. So that's, I sort of started in that mode of questioning. But as I realized, and the numbers of people who were watching just went very high, very quickly, I realized actually this is really important. So, and then of course I go down the rabbit hole and that, so now you can't not do it. You know? It's extraordinary, you um, along with someone like Neil Oliver, but perhaps you more than anyone else, probably have had access to information from people more than anyone else. You are, it's not just about being connected, it's about being informed. And so it's coming out of you now. You, you, you're exuding information, facts and truth. Yes, well, you're right, because not only was I using my monologues in the morning that I do, where I just was using my opinion based on what I thought was just common sense, yes. I was also miraculously being able to interview so many people across a huge spectrum and I said to myself, well, actually, somebody said to me, says, as you interview these people, accept everything. Don't, don't be dismissive. Just, you know, even if you find it difficult, just be open to it. And so that was the policy I took. And it's been brilliant um, because some things have been initially hard to accept. But as you think about things, you start, and, and the more people I've seen, the dots start joining up and you go and investigate a little bit yourself. But I've been so privileged and by osmosis, I suppose, it's now reflected in my thinking and therefore what I say in the, in the monologues and on the channel. And more and more guests come forward, and more and more people want to be on the show, which I, it's very humbling. It is yeah. very humbling. Yeah. I never expected to. And you've had some experiences as well. You had a spiritual experience one day, which yes. gave you, well, really gave you a great sense of peace. As I recall. Yeah, uh, well, it, the thing is, I've had a lot of spiritual people on the show and they talk about a whole load of different things on different realms and everyone's got their different nuance on what it is and how it works. And I kept thinking, right, I'll do a bit of meditation, I'll, I'll open my mind, I'll do all these things and nothing was happening. And I thought, is it true? It, are they making it up? There's too many people and they seem honest and they seem earnest. And then one day I was just getting ready for bed and I sat there and I, I just said, look, if there's anybody here, please contact me. And, and I was in dead earnest for it. And then the next thing I knew, I was in bed and it was the middle of the night. I don't remember, an ordinary area, I would remember getting to bed, cleaning your teeth and all of that. I don't remember any of that. I just woke up, I was in bed and I thought, what's happened? I just don't. But the thing is, I still find that hard to believe it happened, mm. even though I know it did happen. Mm. Um, but I did have a sense of everything's going to be all right. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I suppose what I crave is a conversation because I'm used to that, like we're yes, having. Yes. So that if you were a spiritual or yes. a spirit guide, I yes. could say, can you explain that in more yes. depth? But I've accepted that, okay, that's what I feel. But when you come to an event like this and you've got Mark Steele telling you that there's lasers and there's, they've got this technology, you're still hoping and praying that yes. actually everything is going to be yes. all right. Yes. But I actually do feel that, you know, we're going to be okay and I just hope everybody's okay. There's a lot of fear but as I often remind people fear is false evidence that appears real 
and we need to find the encouragement that comes from faith, uh, which is partly what you're describing, and also um, standing together, this idea of community, because we're strong together. Yes. And here we are at the Great Resist in Peterborough in uh, uh, the beginning of September 2023. It's been an extraordinary roller coaster of the year. It has. But we're, we're seeing, although on the one hand, things that could really frighten us a lot, also a great sense that, well, there are good things to come. So, and people, are, and people are, you know, I mean, the thing that seems important to me is that people are not only are they waking up, but they're getting together. Yes. And yes. we're in a room where people are telling us some frightening things and we're acknowledging it. Yes. But we're not going, yes. oh, my God, and yes. shaking and yes. being fearful. Yeah. And Which I think is what that's important. Net zero is all about. The world is going to boil over. So oh. let's, let's kill We're the in the era population. of boiling, you know, with the worst, <laughs> not the worst uh, summer, but certainly a below average yes, summer. And yeah. we're all told, oh, it's boiling. Oh, golly, can you, you're few, sweating away from the heat. In a few months' time, we'll be scraping global boiling off the front of our windscreens, won't we? Oh, we will. <laughs> early morning. So, Richard, what, what gets you out of bed every morning? Well, um, I get up because I know I've got a monologue to do to get out on YouTube when I'm not I'm on another seven day strike don't know when this will go out but I'll be back on Tuesday um, I, there's just, there is now this need to just talk and I never know really what I'm going to talk about in my morning's monologue which I put out I've got a diary of about a month booked up with people to talk to or I'm at events now talking yeah. But it's just, it just seems so important to keep, the, keep the, the faith, to keep the story going that we're going to be okay. I read my emails and I struggle with those because I get so many. And people send you stuff and you think, oh, that, oh, that's, that will make a good video, that's worth doing. Um, I can't do everything and I just go with what, what is inspirational to me. Um, so that's that's what gets me up. But I'm, I've been someone who always gets up in the morning. I've always yeah. got a spring in my step yes. because this is a. The thing is, this is an amazing life that yeah. we have. Yeah. It's an amazing world that we're living in, even though people are trying to destroy it. And for me, coming out here, we've just been inside, and you come out amongst the trees. That's right. It doesn't matter how clever man is. When it's artificial, it's not real. And. I know they say we live in a, a hologram or a simulation now with quantum physics and everything isn't quite what, what it really is because you get down and it's all vibration and all of this. But this to me sings and I love it, you know, being outside, real, the sun, the air, such as it is, um, the grass, earthing, I've got my feet, I've got my feet, yes, my shoes yes. and socks off, yes. earthing. Um, Let's have a look at your feet there. Yeah, look, there we go. Uh, a pair of feet I've never seen. <laughs> Thank you very much. What a nice man. Um, and it's... Pop my wife's. Well, of course. I need to say that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, we don't have a foot fetish here at all. <laughs> but it, 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 being outdoors and um, being in the real world is, is it's such a wonderful place. Yes. And it's worth fighting for. It is. And, the, and I'm learning how much digital stuff is useful but it is also very easy to manipulate and enslave us. Mm. And we've seen with the kids, particularly the next generation, how they're addicted to their phones, addicted yes. to technology. And because they don't have maturity, they don't see this as being something that's so valuable. And I know that because it's a certain maturity who actually start to realize the world is something special. Yes. You get to a certain point because you know you go through school you you have relationships you get married you're trying to earn enough money you have kids and it's only when you reach a certain maturity you suddenly go actually this is really amazing yes. and what's really important and what's really important yeah. and yeah. it's the next generation that yes. have not yet got there but yeah. it's a shame because we need them now more than any other we do. time we do so we're we are in a war that's the reality of it uh, i believe that one of the things we have to do is to win the war, but then we have to win the peace. Yes. We've got a, a lot of reconstruction to do. Uh, we've been talking today about government and governance. 
So that there's, there's an enormous amount of work. And so our hope and prayer has to be that we work together and we do build that better, better world. Yes. Uh, the, the bright new world in the morning that Roger Whittaker used to sing about is a real possibility. I mean, it's always, it's a song that's been in the human heart from the dawn of time that we have to work, not only to survive, but to create something that is good. Mm. And I think we've all got that sense of legacy in our soul. So and I think we will, because the thing is, I think that, um, and I say this quite a lot, I think the majority of the people are a bit like water. Mm. They will find the line of least resistance. Mm. And I think it's up to us as pioneers to work out that new world and show the rest of the population that is actually a great place. And I think they'll just come. Yes. When, when you don't live in a world that's continually putting you down, Correct, trying yes. to take your money, poisoning you, making you ill, relying on medicines that have, you know, so many side effects. When people realize that there's a holistic, more natural way of living, I think they will, they might be tentative at first and go, well, really, can you have natural medicines? Do they actually work? You go, well, you know, up until a hundred years ago, we lived off the herbs and things, you know, we, That's right. it's, it's amazing. Yeah. And so I think they will come, but it, it's, it's us, you yes. know, yes. and we're all in, what would you say, late 40s, 50s, 60s? That's the generation. That's it, yes. Well, who, uh, I, think, I think my vintage is probably even a little bit older than yours. Uh, well, believe it or not, I have five grandchildren. Oh, fantastic. And, uh, so, but I have got to let you get on to your, your army of fans who are out there. They're uh, all having lunch now. They can, <laughs> can give them uh, monkeys. You're, you're one of the land superheroes, Richard. I want to shake your hand. It's been and, a pleasure. Uh, to say, God bless you, and may you go from strength to strength. There's a lot of people who are. Uh, hoping and praying good for you and your family and I uh, we are all so now connected uh, partly because of what you've done so thank you very much oh, well, I know I speak on behalf of many thousands out there well it, I, I, it's an honor to do it and I'm I'm really humbled that people think that anything I do is worthwhile so thank you it's, it's very so kind. this is Richard Vogues and this is Dr. Chan Abraham and we'll see you soon bye bye <laughs>